A very wonderful morning to my esteemed listener. I am Yemi Graceman Aduloju, lead pastor, Lighthouse International Christian Center, Salmon that you are Road, Ibadan, Nigeria, welcoming you to today's edition of our program, Daily Impact. We have been looking at the subject of the soil, the importance of the soil to the survival and fruitfulness of any seed. We have seen that the word of God is the seed. The seed of God's word is planted in the earth. The intent of the sower of this seed is that the word will produce fruits and great results to the praise of the name of the Lord. However, we have discovered that the condition of the soil into which the seed falls determines to a very large extent the survival and the productivity of the seed in question. We have considered the heart that is busy and crowded and is therefore not able to receive the word of God because of the busyness of this kind of heart. We have seen evil heart that is unable to receive the word of God. It is not receptive to the word and therefore the word cannot produce any fruit or result in him. We also saw the corrupt mind that thinks only of corrupt things. Corruption is all it thinks about and everything about this mind is corruption. And of course, it is whatever is in the mind or heart of a man that comes out of the man. And so because it is corruption, that is in this heart and this mind is filled with corrupt thoughts and thinking. Therefore, it can only bring out corrupt seed and corrupt fruits. So the seed is corrupt because the soil is corrupt. The corrupt soil will corrupt the seed and make the seed to produce evil fruits and evil result. This morning, I want us to consider again the defiled heart or the defiled mind. For our meditation, let's took a, take a look at the book of Titus, chapter number 1 and verse number 15. The Bible says, To the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But even their mind and conscience are defiled. These men have a defiled mind. Anytime or anywhere there is defilement, there is nothing productive, there is nothing excellent that can come out of such a defiled mind or defiled thought. A thought that is defiled will only produce defilement, will only produce evil and corruption because it is defiled. The Bible says in this passage, all things to the pure are pure. But to those who have a defiled mind, an unbelieving mind, nothing is pure. These men with defiled mind, they read negative connotations to whatever happens in the house of God. These are the people that twist testimonies, that twist messages in the house of God for their own personal advantage. They twist the word of God. They twist what they have because their mind is defiled. Their thinking is defiled. And all they are after is personal gain and advantage. And that is why we see lots of people making fun, making jest of testimonies that were shared in, in, in churches and they will twist it and they will cut out a part that is advantageous to them. They won't go through the old testimony, but just a segment of the testimony to make jest. These are men whose mind is defiled. I encourage you to run away from such people and never to join them in advertising their evil. They are defiled in their mind and they are only producing defilement and their life is defiled. And when their judgment will come upon them, everyone who takes pleasure in their evil will be a partaker of their judgment. Romans chapter 1 from verse 29 describes these men with defiled mind as those who are being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are wish paras, they are backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. They not only do those things, but they take pleasure 
in those who do them. That you don't do those things uh, is immaterial if you take pleasure in those who do those things. Don't take pleasure in people whose mind is defiled, people who twist the things of God, who make light the things of God. The punishment comes upon them so soon, so speedily. Don't be a partaker in their punishment. Let your heart be purged. Never allow defilement. A defiled heart can never produce anything good. Another type of heart, a soil that can never give birth to a good seed, is the proud heart or the proud mind. Pride, octiness. In Psalm 101 and in verse number 5, the Bible says, Whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, him I will destroy. The one who has a ugly look and a proud heart, him I will not endure. The man with the ugly look, with a proud heart, God will not endure such a man. In Proverbs chapter 16 and in verse number 5, the word of God says, Everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though they join forces, none will go unpunished. Pride separates a man from God. Pride reduces a man to nothing. The only reason why pride lifts up a man is so he can bring him down. Don't allow your heart to be proud. Don't entertain ugliness in your mind. There is nothing you have or that you are that you have not received or that you did not become. Whatever or whoever you are today, you became it. God is the source of all things. So never allow pride in your heart. Whatever you possess or have now, you got them. You were not born with those things. The source of all things is God. The Bible says, who makes you to be different from others? Or what do you have? that you have not received. And if you have so received it, why are you behaving as if you were born or created with those things? Don't allow pride in your life. A proud heart will not be able to receive the seed of God's word, will not be able to prosper with the seed of God's word. Don't allow pride in your mind. Don't allow pride in your heart. Proud goes before a fall. The Bible also says God himself will resist the proud. He gives grace to the humble, but he stands in the way of the proud. Don't allow pride in your life. Number six is the wicked heart or the wicked mind. There are some people, their mind is full of wickedness. Wickedness is all about them. When you see them, you see wickedness. Their wickedness personified. They concoct wicked things, wicked thoughts, wicked imagination. They do wickedness. They do wickedly to their neighbors. And the Bible says, those who do wickedly against the covenant shall live corrupt with flatteries. They are evil men. They are wicked men. And they can set up people. They can destroy people with their mouth, with their pen, with their actions and their behaviors. They are very destructive. They deceive people, they plan wickedness, they cheat people, and they don't mind to kill. Their wicked mind does not mind to kill or destroy for them to gain their advantage. In Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 9, the Bible says, Beware, lest there be a wicked thought in your heart. The authorized King James Version says, Beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart. So don't allow your heart to be wicked. And the way for your heart not to be wicked is to expose it to the seed of the word of God, having come to Christ, having accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Let the word of God find a resting place in your heart and purge your heart from every form of wickedness. Let me make it clear. There is wickedness in the heart of every man who carries the nature of Adam, but in Christ Jesus, every form of wickedness of the heart or defilement in the heart or corruption is taken away as a new heart is given to us through Christ Jesus our Lord. Dear listener, I encourage you today to eschew defilement in your heart. Never allow your heart to be defiled. Never be proud in the imagination of your mind. And don't allow wickedness in your mind. These are the thoughts, these are the soil that will never produce result, that will never produce or give birth to anything good. Eschew such thoughts, eschew such lifestyle, such mindset, such thinking, such art. Let such art, such thoughts be wiped away from you through the blood of the eternal 
covenant. It is my prayer that your heart will not be defiled, that you will not entertain pride and or wickedness in your mind in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. I'd like you to lift up your voice and begin to purge your heart for, from all wickedness. Father, I purge my heart, I purge myself from every form of defilement, from every form of wickedness in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I purge my mind today. I purge my heart today from all forms of defilement, from all forms of wickedness by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. I'd like you to lift up your voice and pray. Father, I refuse pride. I reject pride in my thoughts, in my thinking. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I humble myself before you. I refuse to be proud. I refuse pride. I reject pride. In the name of Jesus, I acknowledge you as my source. And I acknowledge that there is nothing that I have that I have not received from you. There is nothing that I have that I have not become. I acknowledge your grace as a factor for what I have and for where I am. And I thank you for this grace. I make a pledge, a commitment to remain humble, O God, and not to think of myself more highly than necessary in the name of of Jesus. I'd like you to pray. Ask the Holy Spirit of God to invade your heart and mind and make it a conducive place for the growth and the prosperity of the Word of God. I ask, dear Father, that you will invade my mind, my heart, with your Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit of the living God invade my heart, invade my mind, and make my heart a conducive place for the, the prosperity of the Word of God. Make my heart conducive. Let my mind be conducive to the prosperity of the Word of God, that I may produce results by the Word, that the Word may find a resting place in me and be productive in me, that the name of the Lord may be glorified. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name, amen. I ask that your mind be purged from every form of defilement, from pride, and from every wicked thought. I pray that the Holy Spirit of God will invade your mind and make your heart a conducive place for the prosperity of the word of God in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' precious name, amen. I declare this first day, working day of the week, will profit and prosper you. Today, God will make a way for you. As you step out this week, the blessings of the Lord will attend to you, and the name of the Lord will be glorified in your life, in the precious name of Jesus. Support Daily Impact with Grace Man. Support with your prayer. Pray for this program. Pray for me also. Support also by forwarding this message and sharing the link with your contacts. You can also support financially. Your financial donations towards this program can be sent to the Zenith Bank Account number 12161000456. The account name is Daily Impact with Grace Man. And the Lord bless you as you do. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on other social media platforms. My handle is at Yemi Grace Man. Until I come your way again tomorrow for another exciting edition of our program, I am Jeremy Grisman Adulogy, wishing you a very glorious week and the Lord bless you.